The subject, the close of probation, is one of the most misunderstood subjects in Adventism today. Because of a lack of clear teaching, millions of converts who have joined the church within the past 10 years or so have no true understanding of what will occur at the end of time. Oh friend, these new believers are being spoon-fed the same type of doctrinal soft food which can be heard from thousands of pulpits on Sundays. The hard food of the sanctuary, studies of the Daniel and the Revelation seem to be in scarcity these days. Well, inside this edition of the Sunday Law News Report, we'll see how easy it is to finally understand the subject, the close of probation. And finally, after understanding the close of probation, it is my prayer that you'll be better prepared to meet the coming onslaught, which will soon grip the world. My name is Brent Winfield, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and this is the Sunday Law News Report. Let's begin by turning to Revelation 13, 15. The Bible says, and I quote, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Revelation 13, 15. And then the spirit of prophecy comments, The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. For it is to be the great test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. Oh friend, you may ask the question, when will the image of the beast be given life? Well, the answer, at the National Sunday Law. Before life could be given to the image of the beast, it would already have been formed. This occurs at the coming together of church and state. Listen to what the Spirit of Prophecy says. She says, When the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce her decrees and to sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy, and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. Great Controversy 445. What points of doctrine are held by them in common? Well, the answer, dear friend, is Sunday sacredness and immortality of the soul. But hold on just a minute. There's going to be a test first. The test will be administered to the people of God before probation closes for the rest of the world. We'll be sealed. If we pass the test. We will individually be tested, not as a church, not as not corporately. Before the seal, we'll all be tested at the National Sunday Law. The test will be, will we yield God's true seventh-day Sabbath and give up and keep the Roman Sunday? Or will we be true and despite threats, beatings, torture, or death, be faithful to God in His true Sabbath? In order to better understand this, let's take a bird's, bird's eye view of the events that lead up to the close of probation and beyond. Let's see how God has laid things out for us to understand. Okay, we begin with 1844. This is, of course, when the judgment begins for those who are asleep in the grave. After his death and resurrection, Jesus began a new phase of work for us. He became our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary. The four great periods in our study will be 1844, the National Sunday Law, the close of probation, and then the second coming of Jesus Christ to take his faithful children home to heaven. Now this means that we need to get ready, get ready, get ready between the time periods of 1844 and the National Sunday Law, here's what's going to take place. Listen to this. First of all, there'll be a time of preparation. First Peter 4.17 says, 
For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Number two, we also know that the, 18, the year 1844 is the beginning of judgment for those who are dead. Number three, the word of God says that the wheat and tares must grow together during this time. Four, also during this period of time the church will be considered a church militant. This is opposed to the church triumphant. Five, the spirit of prophecy calls the passing of the National Sunday Law the last act in the drama. She says, the substitution of the laws of men for the law of God, the exaltation by merely human authority of Sunday in place of the Bible Sabbath is the last act in the drama. When this substitution becomes universal, God will reveal himself. He'll arise in his majesty to shake terribly the earth. So between the NSL and the close of probation, six momentous events will occur. This is time, friend, for the final separation of wheat and tares, leaving a whole wheat church. So first, the final shaking. This is where the wheat and tares will be separated. Listen to what she says. I then saw the third angel. Said my accompanying angel, fearful it is work, awful is his mission. He is the angel that is to select the wheat from the tares and seal or bind the wheat for the heavenly garner. These things should engross the whole mind, the whole attention. Early writings, page 118. Number two, the sealing. Number three, the latter rain. Now listen to this again. She says, not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or stain upon them. It is left up to us to remedy the, the defects in our characters, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Number four, the loud cry. Revelation 18, 4, 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Number five, other sheep. This is the time when other sheep who are not of this fold will join God's remnant church. Friend, we have, to work. We have a work to do. Number six, martyrs for Jesus. Those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order, as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth. Their conscientious scruples will be pronounced obstinacy, stubbornness, and contempt of authority. They will be accused of disaffection toward the government. A false coloring will be given to their words. The worst construction will be put upon their motives. As the Protestant churches reject the clear scriptural arguments in defense of God's law, they'll long to silence those whose faith they cannot overthrow by the Bible. The dignitaries of church and state will unite to bribe, persuade, or compel all classes to honor the Sunday. The lack of divine authority will be supplied by oppressive enactments. See the Great Controversy, page 592. Number seven, judgment of the living. Well, in 1844, the judgment began with the dead, as you know, but between the National Sunday Law and the close of probation, there'll be the judgment of those who are living. Then number eight, church triumphant. At last, the church militant will become the church triumphant. Right now, we're considered a church militant because of the tears growing beside wheat. Satan's tears are right now trying to divert God's true children from seeing the events of the imminent close of probation. See, the tears are troublemakers. 
This is what is meant by the church militant. But saint of God, God who is true and faithful will at long last have a church triumphant where his remnant will be ready to be taken home. So between the close of probation and the second coming, there will be the death decree and Armageddon. First, the seven last plagues. Revelation 15.1 says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. It was impossible for the plagues to be poured out while Jesus officiated in the sanctuary. But as his work there is finished, and his intercession closes, there is nothing to stay the wrath of God, and it breaks with fury upon the shelterless head of the guilty sinner, who has slighted salvation and hated reproof. Early writings to it. So, to recap, the three main areas will be between 1844 and the National Sunday Law. Uh, during this time, we'll see the lowering of morals in society, wars and rumors of wars, an increase in crime, an increase in widespread diseases, global financial ruin. Between the National Sunday Law and the close of probation, God's true people will undergo a little time of trouble. Uh, during this time, we'll be living in the countryside, friend, and growing our own food. From the close of probation to the second coming of Christ, there'll be the great time of trouble. O oh, saint of God, we must get ready now for that grand and awful time. But always remember that God loves you. Yes, he really, really does love you.